They roll round first of all on one lap, just holding their places and getting themselves ready. And as they cross the starting line, out will come the green flag, and that's it, they're underway. There's no time limit, there's no set number of laps. It's the last one running that's the winner. And that was the girl there that uh, Dickie was talking about, Linda Cunningham. We saw her last year in this event in a great big Austin princess. She's uh, gone down in size as far as the motor is concerned this year, and she's brought along a lot of her pals as well to uh, give her some sort of moral support. So we'll keep an eye on Linda as we go through the event. Talking to one or two of the girls in the pits before we started, uh, taking this event very, very seriously. One car seems to be untroubled, but that's it as they come over the start line. The green flag goes down, and they're underway. I think we shall see one or two laps uh, where they'll start to settle down, just get the feel of the track and get the feel of their cars, and then we should see the action really begin. And already the bodywork begins to go. That's one front wing. Number 60 in trouble there. Paul Seeley from Feltham in Middlesex. He got himself round the wrong way in the middle of the bend. Not the best place to park. Quite an assortment of cars. That's number 43 getting the job at the Rover. Those big, heavy Rovers, an ideal car for this particular job. Built like tanks, and that's what you need here. The lightweight sprint job is no good. And there's Linda just spinning around there as we came around that bend. Linda was unfortunately facing the wrong way. Right in the middle of the melee. And there's Linda Cunningham, waiting for a chance to leap back in and get going again. Seems to be having some sort of trouble. And another of the ladies in trouble. And she's already out of the car and over the safety fence. Big old Humber, and one, oh dear, the driver halfway out. That's one of the uh, most dangerous parts of this. If you're halfway out and somebody hits your car. 604, he seems to have uh, done for the day. Somebody taking the shortcut on the inside, number 70. And so, uh, Linda Cunningham is back in the race. Linda Cunningham back in now. And one over here finishes up on its side, right on the start line in front of the starting marshal here. As you can see, things getting really congested in places now. And certainly this sort of customary five laps to uh, get sorted out seems to have gone for a chop today because one or two of the lads getting stuck in very, very quickly indeed. <laughs> That's a car there we got a glimpse of. We'll see him again, I expect, in a minute. Last year he had a television set screwed to the top of his car and uh, the message last year was, look, Mum, I'm on telly. And this year he's gone even further. He's getting a bit of a battering from that orange one who's trying to uh, right that overturned car. <laughs> 74 finishing up, facing the wrong way. What? 125 looking... Uh, Decidedly sick, but he's keeping going, and that's all you've got to do. Still, uh, finding his way round, Graham Overy from Berry St Edmunds. Don't get overheated, the message. Well, uh, I think he's likely to do just that in a minute or two if he stays there. That's the best place. Once that car gets over, you've got to get out pretty quick. And it's incredible when you think that uh, a broken fan belt or some minor thing like that can put you out on the motorway when you're in a hurry, and yet these cars keep going with this sort of damage.
Well, the destruction derby usually comes at the uh, end of a day's banger racing because uh, the main object of the exercise, and there's Linda. There's Linda, still going. She's That car looking remarkably unbattered, she seems to have kept herself out of trouble. I don't know whether she's doing it by going round on the inside. Yeah, she's taken to the grass. Come on, Linda, that's cheating a bit. <laughs> yes, the crafty lady on the inside there. Oh, dear, a touch of the three wheels on my wagon from number 12, John Baxter from Newmarket. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you're on one wheel. If you can keep going, that's all that matters. Yes, the Destruction Derby, usually the last event in the day, after we've had some uh, straight racing. Oh, and that's Linda! That's Linda Cunningham! She's out on it. Yeah, she's back on her wheels! And uh, she was cruising around quietly, minding her own business, on the inside. And one of the lads thought, no, she's had it too quiet, too long. But uh, the question is now, can she get going again? And she is. She's not giving up. Something, I think, some bit of bodywork seems to be scraping somewhere. A little bit of trouble getting going. Someone will come and give her a helping hand in a minute if she's not uh, very careful. 814, just spinning around there. That was another of the girls. That was uh, Janet McPherson from Manchester, who's uh, come on to Bangor Racing from Go-Kart Racing. There's our, our friend with the telly on the roof. That was number 29, Malcolm Forbes from Barkingside. And there's that 125, he was still going. 216 has managed to keep himself out of too much trouble and uh, it must be in with some sort of a chance still. Avoiding trouble, here's a very uh, crumpled looking motor. And when you get to the latter stages of this, this reversing technique is uh, definitely favourite because you can have a very good prospect of putting out the opposition without doing too much damage to your own car. Number six seems prepared to take the consequences. That 125 is uh, certainly having a remarkably good go. 216, he's been mixing it. There's Linda Cunningham just in the background there, 811. Crunch. Poor old number six uh, getting squeezed there, Bill Roberts from Basingstoke. Number ten, Terry Kirk from Raynham. Ooh, and the bodywork buckling under the impact. Back-end alterations at the hands of 125. Graham Overy from Barry St Edmunds there. Uh, 811, uh, Linda Cunningham's not giving up, she's still sitting there in that car. But uh, I don't really think the car can go. And the usual rules are, once the car's stopped for about 30 seconds, then uh, uh, that's counted to uh, be out of the race. That, I think, was number 25. Alan Stern, I think. Terry Kirk, that's that number 10 car, and he's going remarkably well. 93 seems to have uh, ground to a halt just about. Oh, he's got new life. That shunt from number 10 got him going again. And I think we've got four left now. Just about four left. Ten and 93. Our chap here giving a wave with the front wing. 25, managing a few revolutions, and that 93, considering the damage and considering the uh, amount of trouble he's managed to find, going very, very well indeed. 29 is still quite a flyer.
25 and 61. And uh, 29 coming down the track, looking for action. Here he comes. He's going to have a go and see if he can get rid of 25. That's it. Right. Halt. Reverse. And... Oh, no, he's leaving number 10. He's going for number 6. Bill Roberts of Basingstoke. Yeah. And Linda Cunningham, Linda Cunningham is going again. Linda Cunningham has got going again. And I can see the trouble now. It's one of the front wheels on that Linda Cunningham car. To say that it's uh, slightly out of balance, uh, I think would be an understatement. Well, we'll have to see what the judges say. But she's certainly got back in and she's certainly going again. 29 has spotted her, and how long is Linda going to last now? Here he comes. And the crowd giving Linda a terrific cheer. <laughs> oh dear, and she's leading him quite a merry dance. Come on, Linda! Come on, keep looking over her shoulder. I don't think she quite knows what to do. Wait! Oh! Well... <laughs> I think she'll know what to do now, but uh, help is at hand. <laughs> the gallant gentleman uh, rushing off the centre green, risking life and limb. Oh, dear, what a rotter, 29. <laughs> Words of reassurance for Linda Cunningham. She'll be right. here she comes. Oh, meanwhile, 25 and... Uh, and 61 are just about the only two left, I think, now. And it's uh, number six and number 25. Number six is Bill Roberts from Basingstoke and 25, Alan Stone from Walthamstow. I think these are the only two left in this event now. Find a, oh, and he found a post to put him on. Now, the technique here, surely, is to get a good gap into reverse and then as hard as you can go. Here comes Alan. Ooh! The front end is, the, of course, the most vulnerable end. <laughs> What's happened to the boot of that car? <laughs> oh, dear. I've heard of a fastback, but this is ridiculous. And uh, number six, I think, is the only one. I think 25 has had it. I think he's had it. We'll give him a few seconds to see if he can get going. He has got going. He's going again. 25 is moving, and that's all that counts. If you're moving, you're still in it. So there's more for number six to do. Now, if you can only find a gear, if you can only find a gear... Oh, dear. Slight uh, wobble on the rear suspension, but he's going, he's going, and I, I think the other one now has packed up. And, in fact, that's it. Yes, number, number 25... Number 25, I think, has been put into second place because he did stop for more than the required 30 seconds. So, in fact, the winner is going to be number six, Bill Roberts of Basingstoke. 25 took a little bit too long to get going, and so that makes the winner number six. And there he is. That's the man who survived that carnage uh, in order to come out on top of the heap in the destruction derby.